in prehistoric times parts of the Iberian Peninsula, modern Spain and Portugal, were occupied by Stone Age inhabitants whose legacies to posterity are remarkable cave paintings of animals. The most notable surviving example of their art is in the cave paintings of Altamira, west of Santander in northern Spain. Around 3000 BC tribes of dark-skinned Iberians from Africa began to settle in the peninsula, hence the name Iberia. A long time later, after 1000 BC, successive waves of Celtic tribes infiltrated the Pyrenees. By about 600 to 400 BC the Celts dominated northern Spain and Portugal, and then spread throughout the peninsula, ruling and mixing with the Iberians to form the Celt-Iberian culture. During the same period, from about 900 BC onwards, people from the eastern the Mediterranean came to Iberia in search of trade, mainly interested in the mineral wealth of the country, silver, iron, and copper. The first to come were the Phoenicians, who brought with them the technique of writing. Their most important settlement was Qadir, modern Cadiz. They were followed, from about the 7th century BC, by Greek traders and colonists. The Greeks introduced the vine and the olive into Spain. Their main trading post was Ampurias, in Catalonia. In the 6th century BC the Phoenicians of Gadir called in their compatriots from the Phoenician colony of Carthage in North Africa to help repel attacks by the native tribes. The Carthaginians stayed on in the peninsula, which they called Spanarspania, meaning land of rabbits. At first, they confined themselves to trade in the exploitation of the silver mines, but later they saw Spain, with its tough tribesmen whom they engaged as mercenaries, as a source of power and a base for operations against their great rival, Rome. After the defeat of Carthage in the First Punic War with Rome, 264-241 BC, the Carthaginian general Hamilcar Barca built Spain a powerful state and a formidable army. His son-in-law and successor, Hasdrubal, founded a capital city New Carthage, Cartagena, and continued Hamilcar's work. Rome, apprehensive of this growth of Carthaginian strength in Spain concluded a treaty with Hasdrubal under which the Carthaginians were to remain south of the Ebro and were not to molest Saguntum, an independent town, originally settled by Greek colonists, south of the river, friendly to Rome. Hasdrubal was assassinated in 22 colon LBC and was succeeded as Carthaginian commander-in-chief in Spain by Hannibal, the 26-year-old son of Hamalcar, and greatest of the Barca family. To pick a quarrel with Rose Hannibal attacked Saguntum in 219 BC, capturing it after eight months of siege, and started the Second Punic War with Rome, 218-201 BC. The Carthaginians under Hannibal marched through southern Gaul and crossed through the Alps into Italy. Here, Hannibal campaigned successfully for 14 years but was unable to capture Rome. Meanwhile, the Roman general Scipio evicted the Carthaginians from Spain, and after Hannibal had been recalled to Carthage he was defeated by Scipio at the decisive Battle of Zama in 202 BC Carthage gave up her overseas possessions, and in Iberia, the Romans set about the subjugation of the fiercely independent Celtiberian tribes. The early Phoenicians, the Greeks, and the Carthaginians had made no lasting impression on the peoples of the Iberian Peninsula. One of these peoples, who deserve separate mention, is the Basques. They inhabited, and still do inhabit, the mountainous area, mainly in Spain but partly in France, at the angle of the Bay of Biscay. Their origin, and that of their unique language unrelated to any other, is uncertain in the subject of scholarly dispute. Perhaps they are a remnant of the Celtiberians, or even of the earlier Stone Age inhabitants of the Western Pyrenees. Throughout the ages, they have succeeded in preserving some privileges of local self-government, and their language, though most of them now speak Spanish or French as well.